Graham. Hello. Welcome to the crowd. Thank you. Um, there's a bit of a predicament at the moment. Uh, you must be confident, though, having taken the job that you can turn this around. I don't think it's ever about uh, turning something around. I think it's just about pushing forward from wherever you are at any football club. And uh, what I do know is that if you work really hard um, and really smart and you know your job, um, you'll always go forward. So uh, that's what my focus is, to get in, get to know the lads, get to know the football club and uh, do my best to help the football club to become better than it is at this moment in time. You watched the game on Saturday, of course. Um, what did you make of it? Did you think there was something to work with there? Well, I don't, I don't think it's just looking at the game Saturday. I think it's um, knowing the players at the football club. There's some uh, terrific lads at this football club, no question about it. You look at lads like uh, Joe Day, the keeper, um, Toza, um, they were producing levels of performance at the weekend and, and in general that uh, you'd have to say a championship level, not League Two. So there's, there's footballers here who've got capability and potential way beyond the level that the club's at right now. And uh, I've mentioned that too. So uh, there's, there's great possibilities at any football club if you, if you harness the lads, help them and, and move them forward. So would you say the team are in a false position then at the moment? No, the club are where they are. Um, you're never in a football position. You get what you deserve in life and in football. And uh, the, the club is where it is. So we, we know we've got some work to do, but uh, I don't think work scares anybody um, at, at the football club. Certainly talking to the board, um, talking to the people that I've met around the place. Um, everybody knows that you know hard work is the essence of success, and uh, everybody's geared up for it. Gavin, you obviously spoke to uh, a few people in your interviews last <coughs> week. Why Graham? Um, I think as a board, uh, we were pretty unanimous in the fact that Graham offered what we were looking for, which was uh, somebody who comes with an experienced pedigree within this division and indeed higher. And certainly as a board, and uh, I'm sure Malcolm will agree with this, that uh, we were very impressed with Graham as an individual um, uh, in terms of the way that he prepared for um, the interview and in certainly the way that he delivered uh, the answers to the questions that we asked. And, and as a board, I think we felt that there was a, uh, a, a good understanding straight away. There was a, almost a, a, I guess in a way, almost a, um, a, a coming together and understanding what it was all about. And I think one of the biggest things for us as well about Graham is that it wasn't just about the football inside. Obviously, he's a very successful businessman and he understood what we were trying to achieve um, as a club as well. So for us, the two things came together uh, very nicely and we're really pleased and, uh, and delighted that he's here today with us. And you must be confident, I asked him right at the beginning whether you could turn it around, you must be confident with Graham and tell him how you can avoid relegation. Well that's the plan um, and as Graham has said it's all about hard work and putting that ha hard work in and, and you get what you, you, you will do then out of life as accordingly. So yeah we're confident that that will, that will happen. Um, what we've got to do as a board to make sure that we support Graham um, and, and the rest of the staff and the players to get where he wants them to be, but absolutely so. I think that um, you know it's exciting times at the club. I think there's a great opportunity here, and we believe Graham uh, is the man to take that forward. Graham, what can the Newport fans expect from your team? I think what, e what any group of fans uh, should expect from their football team is that they go into games fit to do the job, they go into games organised to win the game. Uh, they go into games uh, giving the fans the level of commitment and desire that the fans would expect. Now, the one thing that people have said to me, people who know the football club, people who've played at the football club, the one thing that they've said consistently is, this is as passionate a group of fans as you will find. And I think when you've got that as a tool and an asset to harness, um, you give yourself an even greater chance because players respond to the passion from the terraces. Players respond to um, what it is that the fans give to them. Um, you give what you get and uh, you get what you give. And you know that sort of philosophy of uh, the fans bringing their passion to bear on the players and the players giving it back to them, I think uh, is, is always a, a beautiful thing to have as a manager. So um, it's, it's the fans contributing to the football club, it's the players giving to the fans um, in equal measure in terms of the passion that they've got for, for winning. Graham, last one from me. Um, there's obviously staff here already. Um, do you know what you're gonna do with your backroom team yet? Have you made that decision? Well, I brought my um, assistant uh, from Stephen Isian from Preston, Dino Mamria, in with me. Um, Dino, obviously, a, a highly qualified UEFA Pro Licence coach, and uh, a guy who I know well and who knows me well. And you know, we we've always worked well together. Um, we sing off the same hymn sheet in terms of our beliefs. 
um, if we have our, uh, our occasional disagreement along the way, but we understand each other and, uh, and we both are committed people in terms of, in terms of winning. So that's terrific. Um, the rest of the, the staff and the people at the club, as I said to the board, the first thing's first. I've got to uh, walk in the door and I've got to um, see what's here. I've got to uh, yeah, meet the people that are here and do my, do my damnedest to bring their very best out. Um, you're in a, a situation where the transfer window shut and uh, you know, you're going to have to work together whether you like it or not, players and, and, and management. And uh, you know, I, I'm looking forward to working with a group of lads that are here. I know there's some um, really experienced boys here, um, a lot of lads who know what, what, it, is that, what it takes to win. And uh, we've got to harness those players, work with those players. They've got to work with us. And we've all got to come together to create a collective winning way. Uh, as a manager, if you walk in and say, well, this is my winning, my winning way um, or the highway, you're going to fail in this day and age. Um, you've got to come in, you've got to listen, and you've got to collectively work it out with your, with your lads. And uh, you know, I, I know a way of winning. Uh, I'm sure a lot of the lads here will know ways of winning. And we've got to find one that we can all buy into um, that's going to take this football club forward. Thank you. How much of a challenge is this for you? Yeah, it's, uh, I, I said um, to the board and I said in an interview over the weekend that um, I don't intend for Preston or Thin to be the biggest club I've ever managed um, when it comes to the end of my career. Um, I want to uh, go forward in my career and, and get to the very top. I, I put a lot, of, uh, a lot of hard work in at Stevenage. Um, back to back promotions, um, top six of League One, um, in order to move from non league to a club like Preston. And uh, it didn't work out. That's um, that's history. Now there's no point crying over that. Um, I've got a great opportunity here to grab hold of a football club and show what I can do as a manager. And uh, I fully intend to um, work with Newport County to make it as good as it possibly can be. Um, we are where we are. We all know that. Um, that's a big part of the opportunity. I mean, what, what's your initial assessment of where Newport County are? I mean, we know bottom of, of League Two. Well, the training board's good. Um, I picked this one up on the way in, it's brand spanking new and uh, it's got a nice badge on it, so we're there. That's a bounce country of have the place at the moment, so uh, where, where, where is the football club and, and where can it go? You couldn't get a better training facility than this, could you? I mean, you've got an international velodrome, you've got the international football team that you know trains on, on your doorstep. This is a complex, it's got everything you want in terms of sports science and facilities. So. Uh, in the end, that's what you need to produce a winning football team. If you've got the facilities um, on your doorstep, then it's just about using them. If you've got the expertise on your doorstep, it's just about using it. You've seen what has happened to Burton Albion um, in training at St George's Park. They've got the facilities, they've made use of them, made use of the expertise, and look where they are. So the potential for Newport is there for all to see. Um, we just have to harness the facility, harness the expertise, and make sure that the, the players um, are adapted so that they can use it to their advantage. What have you been doing since your last in football, which was at, at Peterborough? Crying, um, sulking, uh, playing loads of golf, um, and getting really yeah. twitchy now that the football season started, and uh, and games are there, and uh, it's a horrible feeling when you want to be in a dugout, you want to be winning football matches, uh, and you're not, and you're waiting for your next opportunity. Um, it's just a horrible feeling. You go and watch games, and you think he should be doing this, he should be doing that. I'd have done this, I'd have done that, I'd have made that change. What's he doing? And you do all of that, you keep it inside yourself and pretend you don't really care, but um, you do because you just want to be in the dugout. So uh, a bit of all of that, a bit of learning as well, because uh, even at whatever it is, 48 and 800 plus games, um, you know very little compared to you know the big wide world out there. So I always keep my eyes and ears open and try and learn a lot off of, of the very best. So I speak to a lot of people and, and watch a lot of what other people do and, and try and learn as much as I can because I want to be the best I can be. What, what would you say is the... The Graham Wesley style changes every day because every day you live and every day you learn. Um, what I would have done 20 years ago, I probably wouldn't do today. What I would have done 10 years ago, I probably wouldn't do today. But you know, but you, you fall over sometimes. I, certainly, I've got an, um, a good ability to get back up, um, not to look backwards and dwell. Um, I've got a good ability to learn and uh, to progress and go forward. And uh, I intend to keep doing that here. I'm sure I'll make mistakes along the way, but. Uh, I'm sure the football club can rely on me to be a, a strong individual who gets himself back up and fights very, very hard to succeed. But what about in terms of style on the pitch? What, what do you want to see from your team? I don't think it pays to um, talk about my style. I think uh, what I have to do is to harness the players that are at the football club and uh, create a style that works for them and that works for this club. 
Um, we have to take into account um, you know, the home ground that we're playing on uh, because half your games are there and we need to make sure that we can win there. Um, the, the home record hasn't been great here. Uh, people who know me will know I've always had good home records and uh, I fully intend to make sure that as is a place people don't like coming, as is a place where people come and expect to lose. Um, that's a really important part of any football club that they know how to make their home ground work. So uh, you can expect that. But you can expect me, you know, looking at the squad, I'm not going to be changing the squad around. We're, we're together whether we like it or not. And uh, I actually am glad we're together. It reminds me very much of when I went into Russian and Diamonds and I inherited a squad that was languishing, but I thought from the outside was really talented. And uh, I think there's some really good talent in this football club too. I think it's about finding a way of working with them. Um, it's not about me and my style. It's about them and their style. It's about the style that they believe in, the style that they believe can win football matches. Because uh, if I come in and ask them to do what they can't do or what doesn't play to their strengths, then uh, that's not going to be good for the club. So um, the style, it's about me adapting to them and helping them to become as good as they can be. Does it concern you that the, the home ground is also used for rugby? No. The, the pitch? No, it is as it is. Um, if the pitch um, is difficult in certain areas, um, then it's up to us to adapt to that. It's up to us to play a brand of football that succeeds in those conditions. Um, we all know that the best way of winning football matches is to own the ball. Um, the best way of winning football matches is to go forward. The best way of winning football matches is to shoot as often as possible. Um, the best way of winning football matches is to score goals. We have to learn how to do that on the football pitch. Um, I expect our team to be fit enough to produce really good possession football. I expect the possession football to be of really good quality, creating many overloads. I expect the overloads to result in purposeful play. I want crosses, I want shots. Um, those are the things that are going to be demanded of our team. We'll work out the best way of playing at home to achieve that. We sure. Thank you. Graham, uh, what, what were your first message to pay for you when you, uh, when you get them all together this afternoon? Make sure you smile every day when you come to work um, <laughs> because I think it's really important that you can enjoy yourself. And uh, if you're enjoying yourself, you've got a really good chance of being at your best. Um, what's gone is gone. Uh, we can't change that. Um, what's in front of us is a great opportunity. Um, we've got a bit of work to do, but if you think about it, the side that is in seventh place right now um, has got a goal difference that is five better than ours. So if we'd have scored three more and conceded two less, we'd have the same goal difference as the seventh place side. Um, it's fine margins football, and I'm sure that we can find a way of producing three more goals and conceding two less with a little bit of hard work. We've seen Justin Edwards do well, move up the league, Sean Sheridan do well as well, get other jobs. Can you assure you put fans that you're, you're here for the long haul, even uh, when, when you accomplish your goal? Well, the, the board asked me at an interview, um, you know, what is your expectation in terms of your commitment to this football club? And I said um, exactly what I said to you just now. I don't want Preston North Ends to be the biggest job that I ever have in football. Uh, I want to make sure that I go and get something bigger than Preston and that I go and get something bigger than Preston and do better with it than I did with Preston. That's my objective. If I'm going to get that sort of opportunity, the next job I do, and that's now this job, um, has to be a sensational one. I have to grab hold of a football club and work with that football club to produce an incredible performance. If I produce an incredible performance, a door may open for me, but there's going to be a lot of hard work in front of me for me to be able to produce the type of opportunity for myself that I want. And I'm sure that if that opportunity comes along, it will be because you know I've done really well as this club's manager, and I'm sure that everybody at this football club will then say thanks very much, good luck. Is there anything, Graham, that from I guess you've, you've watched a few of the games so far this season? Is, is there anything that you you can you see that's been kind of maybe lacking in, in, the, in the players at all that you think can can be improved? Can play well, trust me, every Saturday that I watch our team, every Tuesday that I watch our team. They'll walk back in the dressing room and I will give them a lot of good, positive, constructive feedback about what they've done. And I'll nail them as well. And there won't be a day where I don't find something that they can do better. Because the whole purpose of being there as a coach is to make sure that your players get better and better and better so they can fulfil their potential. So there's lots of individual and collective feedback that I could give. Um, you know, what's gone is gone. Um, let's be frank. The club's had a hell of a tough start to the season. Um, they've uh, only played four home games in the league. Uh, they've had six away games and six tough away games. I'm certainly glad that some of them are out of the way. Um, it's, uh, it's a right Brucey bonus for me to be walking in with uh, some of those fixtures gone. 
So, uh, you know, we are where we are. What's gone is gone. Lads have learned their lessons, been edged out in a, a few games here and there. As I say, a little bit tighter defensively, a little bit more fluid going forward, and we'll be winning football matches. Did you speak to anyone to kind of find out any more about the, camp, the club before you... you yeah, I, I was fortunate in that I knew you know several players who who played here before. Um, you know what it's like as a as a manager. We might not, but as a, as an out of work manager, people are always on the phone to you saying, "Oh, your name's linked." You know what you're thinking of doing, and there's always people amongst those amongst those that call you uh, who can give you a lot of clues about the club and the way it works. Uh, I tend to judge not by what I hear. I tend to judge by what I see for myself. Uh, when I got the phone call to say, you know, will you come down? I had a, a good call with Malcolm, um, who said, look, come down, we'd like to speak to you, and, and gave me a little bit of an insight into what the club was trying to achieve. And uh, the truth of the matter, I came down and, and met, the, met the board, spent a lot of time talking to Michael Flynn, who talked very positively, very constructively about the club, then with, with Gavin, but with the whole board. Um, you know, my interview, my meeting, whatever you want to call it, um, was a, a very constructive affair where I learned that there were a lot of very good people with a lot of care, pride and passion for the football club. And uh, it just appealed to me, it attracted me. Um, I liked the fact that everybody was so hands-on, that the facilities were there, that everybody wanted to help. Um, the passion of the fans shone through in, in everything that was being spoken about. You know, the, the board are there as a, as a trust board, the, the board are there to, to harness the fans, to be there for the fans, to be with the fans. It, it's a very collective entity here, and uh, that suits me a lot. I like the feel of it. You know, I've, um, I've been really impressed by their togetherness and their sense of desire and ambition for the future. And uh, as I say, I can't wait to start making my little bit of contribution to it, and I hope that you know, with a little bit of contribution, um, there can be some serious successes. Gentlemen, this way, please, over here, please. Yes. Okay. So on the right. uh, yeah, thank you. Just into this camera, please. There we go. Lovely. Thank you. And again. Well done. Thanks. You're done? Okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Done. Okay. Thanks very much, everybody. Yeah, thank you.